on the campus of Loyola Marymount University, the seven top Democrats running for president just faced off in the final debate of 2019. And less than 24 hours after the House voted to impeach President Trump, the candidates had a lot to talk about. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Michael. And I'm Pat Harvey. And welcome to our special coverage of the Democratic debate right here in L.A., streaming live on CBSN Los Angeles. We have team coverage of how the issues impact Southern California and how local voters are reacting to the debate. In just a moment, we're going to talk to our political analyst, veteran L.A. City and County Leader Zev Yaroslavsky, now with the UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs. And we've also got team coverage live on the LMU campus. And let's begin with CBS LA's Tom Waite. He has a look at some of the biggest moments from tonight's debate. And there were quite a few, Tom. Yeah, absolutely, Pat and Jeff. There were some very fiery exchanges between the candidates. The night started with the candidates attacking Donald Trump for being corrupt and deserving impeachment. Then they got to some of the more important issues facing voters here in California, including immigration. I believe everyone on this stage would do the right thing by dreamers in the first 100 days. I would make it a top priority. I'm the son of immigrants myself. The fact is almost half of Fortune 500 companies were started by an immigrant or children of immigrants. Immigrants make our country stronger and more dynamic. And immigrants are being scapegoated for issues they have absolutely nothing to do with. Day one, executive order, restore the legal status of 1.8 million young people in the DACA program. Day one. We change border policy so that federal agents will never snatch babies from the arms of their mothers. My day to day uh, with a group of immigrants who are there talking to me about housing. And I thought about this president and what he's done. He has used our immigrants as political pawns. Every single day, he tries to draw a wedge. I will be a different president. I think it's important to note that this president is not against immigration. He's against immigration by non-white people. Yes. This is his attempt to divide us, as Senator Sanders said, on race. And that's what he's been doing since the very first day he started running for president. Number one, the reason we're the country we are is because of immigration. We've been able to cherry pick the best from every single continent. The people who come here have determination, resilience, they are ready to stand up and work like the devil. We have 24 out of our 100 children in our school today is Hispanic. The idea that we are going to walk away and not provide every opportunity for them is not only stupid and immoral, but it's bad for America. They are the future of America, and we should invest in them. Everybody will benefit from it, every single American. And they should have a fast track to citizenship. And something you may have noticed, this was a much smaller debate stage tonight. Only seven candidates were on stage, and that's because of rules for this debate having to do with how many donors the candidates have and also how having to do with polls in early state polls and also polls nationally. So that kind of determined how many of the candidates qualified for the debate tonight. Another thing we were looking out for, Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Sanders, how, or Elizabeth Warren, how would they go after each other? The two of them have been publicly feuding in recent weeks. Take a look here. The mayor just recently had a fundraiser that was held in a wine cave full of crystals and served $900 a bottle wine. Um, think about who comes to that. He had promised that every fundraiser he would do would be open door, but this one was closed door. We made the decision many years ago that rich people in smoke-filled rooms would not pick the next president of the United States. <laughs> Billionaires in wine caves should not pick the next president of the United States. Mr. Mayor, your okay. response. You know, okay. according to Forbes magazine, I am the literally the only person on this stage who's not a millionaire or a billionaire. So if this is important, this is the problem with issuing purity tests you cannot yourself pass. If I pledge, if I pledge never to be in the company of a progressive Democratic donor, I couldn't be up here. Senator, your net worth is 100 times mine. Now, supposing that you went home feeling the holiday spirit, I know this isn't likely, but stay with me, and decided to 
Go on to peepforamerica.com and give the maximum allowable by law, $2,800. Would that pollute my campaign because it came from a wealthy person? No, I would be glad to have that support. We need the support from everybody who is committed to helping us defeat Donald Trump. Senator Warren, I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I do not sell access to my time. I don't do call time Hold with millionaires second. and billionaires. Sorry, as of I when, don't Senator? Meet, I don't meet behind closed doors with big dollar donors. And look, I've taken one that ought to be an easy step for everyone here. I've said to anyone who wants to donate to me, if you want to donate to me, that's fine. But don't come around later expecting to be named ambassador. Because that's what goes on in these high dollar fundraisers. And a lot more fiery exchanges there and a number of major issues discussed, including climate change and also race. On the debate stage tonight, there was only one person of color on the stage. It was Andrew Yang. Reporting live here on the LMU campus, I'm Tom Waite, CBSN Los Angeles.